And the promise of that passage, and in fact the promise of the whole Bible, is that something will be done, that God is just and judgment will come. Shortly after Oliver Anthony rocketed to international fame, thousands turned out to see him play a live show. And here, once again, he made news, this time by reading a passage from the Bible, specifically Psalm 37. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright, but their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little that have righteousness than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will have plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed and they will go up in smoke. It's not hard to see why people responded so positively to that reading. We all have an innate, God-given hatred for injustice. When we see the corrupt in positions of power, prospering as a result of taking advantage of others, we long for something to be done. And the promise of that passage, and in fact the promise of the whole Bible, is that something will be done. That God is just and judgment will come. But that's both good and bad news. Because the God who knows about every dirty deal made in every nefarious billionaire boardroom also knows all about me and about you. And the Bible that so clearly promises justice for the powerful is equally clear that all of us are sinners, that we all fall short of God's glory, and that each of us will stand before that perfectly just judge. And this is where the good news of the gospel comes in. Because left to ourselves, we're hopeless, we're doomed. But the point of the Bible is that God has not left us to ourselves. He came to rescue us. This is why Jesus came, and this is why Jesus died. The cross of Jesus Christ was not a mistake or an aberration. It was the reason for his coming. Jesus himself said, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The Bible teaches that in his death, Jesus Christ bore the death penalty on our behalf. He died in our place as our substitute, and he paid the price in full. And he proved it all by rising from the dead. And how, you may ask, do we access the benefits of what Jesus has done? And the biblical answer is simple, repentance and faith. We simply turn from our sin, from trusting in ourselves, and we place all of our confidence in Jesus and what he's done for us. And when we do that, he saves us. He makes us brand new. He gives us new life. He reconciles us to himself. And he makes us a part of that righteous people who will be spared his coming judgment. So as you reflect on our shared frustration in this nation, don't let this moment just be a passing cultural spasm, but recognize that you can be saved from your sin. You can be given an eternal hope that can't be touched by corrupt politicians. And so I'll give the final word here to the closing verses of Psalm 37. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. We're here to help people understand who Jesus is and what he's done and why he's still the savior for everyone everywhere. If we can help you understand the gospel, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to serve you. God bless.